Hi, this is Rich Boren with Cruise Aura Water and Technotics, and we're continuing our video series highlighting the different modules that make up the Cruise Aura Water water maker. In front of me here is module two, which we call the pressure vessel assembly. So in front of me, I have the pressure vessel assembly module two for the 30 and the 40 gallon per hour water makers. It's basically two 40 inch RO membranes, a standard Dow Film Tech SW30 2540 part number membrane, which is the industry standard kind of gold standard membrane, which is why we use it. It's available all over the world, all over the internet. You're not locked into a high price re uh, replacement membrane. So we plumb these in series. <clears throat> so on this side of the assembly, you'll see a stainless steel tube. So basically seawater and you can see the flow directions. In this unit seawater is entering in the top membrane flowing through, crossing over and then exiting the opposite side. So on one side of the pressure vessel assembly you have your high pressure inlet and outlet lines along with these low pressure product water outlet lines. And with the assembly in the little bag zip tied here will be a little T assembly. You can take the fresh product water off of either side of the membrane. So you can have all of your connections on this side or you can have the high pressure in and out on one side, the product water out on the other side. If you don't want to use this set you just leave the shipping plugs in it and you'll be fine. So one of the common questions we get about the RO membrane pressure vessel assembly is where can this be mounted? Really the question is almost anywhere. The only temperature limitation you have and I have my unit by the way mounted in my engine room on my Hudson Force 50 about a foot away from my 120 horsepower Ford Lehman engine. So, you know, when we motor for hours at a time, days at a time, just like all sailboats do at times when there's no wind. So your temperature limitation when the unit is sitting and not in operation is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty darn hot. Most engine rooms do not get 140 degrees. So if yours doesn't get that hot, you can mount these RO membrane pressure vessel unit in your engine compartment. While the unit's running, the maximum operating temp is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you think about it, when it's running, it's acting as a heat exchanger. Seawater is flowing through the pressure vessel assembly. So, you know, you're pulling in cool seawater. So the chances of reaching that 125 degree operating temp is pretty slim. That's not something I would worry about. So the mounting feet, I'll show those here. These are fiberglass unistrap. We chose this so that you could either tab this onto your fiberglass hole. You can, of course, drill through it with some wood screws and bolts. But you can tab these mounts to the hole if you want to mount it directly to your hole or a bulkhead. Or, of course, you can use wood screws. Now, I, one question I get is about membrane changeouts. The RO membranes are good for five to seven years. So this isn't something you're going to be accessing all the time for routine maintenance. So the RO membrane's 40 inches. From cat face to cat face is 44 inches. So if you're not really gonna have 84 inches, <laughs> I had to do math in my head quick, you're not gonna have 84 inches of room typically to mount the pressure vessel and to do a membrane exchange. So the common thing would be to, when it comes time for a membrane change, to take these out into the cockpit, remove them from your mounting location, take them out into the cockpit, and do your membrane change out, then put them back in place. So finding room to slide the rigid membrane in and out, that's not something I would really give much worry to since it's something you're only gonna be doing every five to seven years. So in terms of mounting configuration, they can be mounted flat this way, up, up on a bulkhead, vertically, upside down. 
there really isn't a mounting requirement. The only requirement is that if you're going to mount it vertically, you want to have the connections all at the top of the pressure vessel. That way when the unit is sitting pickled, the pressure vessels stay full of the pickling preservative and it doesn't run out leaving the membrane a chance to dry out. Because one of the things that can damage the RO membranes is if the membrane is allowed to get dry. The membrane ship in a double Ziploc bag with moisture and pickling solution in it. So it's something you want to keep dry and you don't want them to ever have the chance to dry out. That's a surefire way to need a new RO membrane. The high pressure hose connections that are on the same side of the pressure vessel, they come with these shipping caps so everything's pickled and sealed. So when we ship this unit to you, we fill it with pickling preservative. So when you get the unit, it's already pickled. So the first time you run seawater through the unit, you've now commissioned it per se from the RO membranes point of view. So then you're, you've started that clock of every five days something has to happen to these RO membranes. They either get ran to produce seawater or you do a fresh water flush to, to exchange the volume of water that's sitting in here or the unit gets pickled. So that fresh water flush can either be done manually or there's an auto flush option depending on if you're interested in that. But anytime the membrane's going to sit for more than you know, it's, it's really three days in warm climates. It's, you know, seven to ten days in cold climates because it's not the seawater sitting in here that damages the RO membranes. It's the animals living in the seawater. They use all the oxygen, die, and then start rotting, and the anaerobic bacteria start eating the animals' bodies, giving off hydrogen sulfide that hydrogen sulfide gas, the process of the animals reproducing and taking over the membranes, that's what causes the damage. It's not the seawater. The unit can sit in seawater. That's, that's not a problem. So in terms of the orientation again, you'll see the direction stickers on the membranes that show the flow direction. And then we'll have another video on actually changing the RO membranes so you can see how those go together. So this dual membrane pressure vessel assembly is what we use on the 30 and the 40 gallon per hour water maker. For the 20 gallon per hour water maker, it's just a single 40 inch pressure vessel. And that is the only difference between the 20 and the 30, one pressure vessel or two. So in terms of power usage, everything else is the same. So if you have an SM20 and decide later on you want to upgrade to a 30 gallon per hour unit, you can simply buy a second pressure vessel, some new mounting feet, and a crossover connector and off you go. So on the 20 gallon per hour unit, you don't have the high, the, the, high, the inlet and outlet on one side of the pressure vessel. You just have an inlet and an outlet. So you'll need to have your high pressure pump going in, coming out, going to your remote panel. You won't have the second pressure vessel. So you'll need access to both sides of your single 40 inch membrane if you have the 20 gallon per hour unit. The unit comes with straight high pressure fittings installed on the pressure vessel tube, but we can put 90 degree fitting. So if you want to have a, if you have a limited space and need to gain a few inches, we can put a 90 degree fitting on there and it's not going to affect the, the performance of the system.